Good morning, Bulldogs. This week on Code Blue, Vin is here to tell us about the Sean Joyce Foundation and the 5K race they are holding on the morning of October 26th. We also got your opinions on school lunch and the taste test they held on Wednesday. Presenter Kevin Rosario came to Holbrook Middle High School to speak on addiction and wellness. After the presentation, Dominic caught up with Kevin as well as students to get their thoughts on the presentation. Now if you could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stay standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Hey Bulldogs, I'm Katori Nicholas. And I'm Niall Horgan. Welcome to Code Blue News. There's a lot of reward. Next week is homecoming week. Monday is America Monday. Tuesday is Duo Day. Wednesday is Washout Wednesday. Thursday is Character Day. And Friday is Fanatic Bulldog Fan Friday. We're excited to see what everyone dresses up as next week. Who do you want to see kiss a bulldog? The rumor is Miss F is very excited to be entered in this contest. Start casting your vote by putting money in the jugs next week at lunch. Now let's go to Matt, who has an interesting take on Columbus Day. There's a lot of rewards you can give a hero to cement their name in history. You can give them a street sign, the name of a town, the name of a state. But you have to be an absolute legend to have a day named after you. There are many heroes that are deserving of a day named after them. FDR cured the economy during the Great Depression and set the groundwork for us to win World War II. Jesse Owens won four gold medals in Berlin, Nazi Germany in 1936. He really stuck it to Hitler, who only had Aryans in the Olympics, and he thought he had the most medals in the bag. Martin Luther King Jr. already has a day after him, which I think is fitting. However, another important man in American history who has a holiday is Christopher Columbus. Out of everybody I just mentioned, his legacy is by far the most questionable. We now know that Columbus had no intentions to hit America. He begged the king and queen of Spain to let him take a boat to India, going the opposite way. I think he did terrible things. He just waltzed all in to the New World and slaughtered a bunch of Native Americans. He imprisoned, murdered, decimated what we now know as like Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Columbus immediately brought back many ships from Spain and began pillaging the Native Americans. Remember, he thought that they were Indians who had bountiful amounts of gold. He knew in his heart that they were lying to him. So, he killed them all. He began pillaging every island in the Caribbean and died thinking that he had reached America. I'm not kidding. From where I'm sitting, I have no idea why we idolize Columbus. Leif Erikson was actually the Viking to discover the Americas. It's Leif Erikson Day! I don't think we should celebrate Columbus Day as Columbus Day. I like the whole, was it Indigenous Peoples Day? Um, I think it's kind of weird that it's still celebrated today and then it hasn't been corrected. I typically like to be unbiased during my segments, but I really try to find positivity in Columbus, but I couldn't find it online or in interviews. So don't be surprised if this holiday is altered in your lifetime. I think Harriet Tubman should have her own holiday. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar have a holiday rather than him. This is Matt Messina, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Matt. Homecoming dance tickets can be bought at lunch for students in grades nine through 12. Tickets are $20 each, and this includes pizza and a drink. If you are bringing a guest, you must complete a guest form. Guest forms can be picked up in the office or Miss Gallagher's room. Remember, they must be complete and signed by Mrs. O'Driscoll before you buy your dance ticket. Last night, the interviews for this year's homecoming king and queen were held. We would like to congratulate all the seniors on this year's court. Saturday, following the Sean Joyce 5K, there will be a homecoming dance for all high school students. Vin is here to tell us about the Sean Joyce 5K and the foundation that supports it. Ready to see your marks. The Sean Joyce Foundation is an organization created in memory of Sean Joyce, a student who died of Triple E at the age of 13 and 2004. Its goal is to increase awareness about Triple E and wearing bug spray. The Sean Joyce Foundation hosts an annual 5K road race and a one-mile walk around the school. This race is a large part of the foundation as it is the main source of funding. This year, the event is scheduled for October 26th at the Holbrook Middle High School. The proceeds for the race are enough to keep the foundation going. Um, let, going into last year, the Sean Joyce Foundation hadn't done a fundraiser for quite a few years, so we came up with the idea of hosting a 5K to be able to keep the foundation going in Sean's memory. 
We had 136 people or so finish the race. We had a couple more people sign up. There was like about 300 total. We were really happy with the turnout last year. We're hoping to have even more people this year. There's still plenty of time to sign up. It's on racewire.com. Now, you may be wondering how the funding is used. Well, these funds are used to benefit Holbrook residents in many ways. For example, the mosquito traps are on Sumner Field allow people to safely walk on the path in spring and summer without the fear of mosquitoes. So the Sean Joyce Foundation, since it started in 2004, has donated over $100,000 in scholarships. Most of them have been to graduates from Holbrook High School. They also built the Sean Joyce Athletic Field over at Sumner Field. Before, it used to be all trees there, and the Hurley Funeral Home donated the land, and the Sean Joyce Foundation cleared the land and put that baseball field in. That's all for today. This is Vin Wing, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Vin. You can still register to run the Sean Joyce Foundation 5K Road Race on racewire.com. This event supports the Sean Joyce Foundation, which has given over $100,000 in scholarships to students over the last 15 years. The race is on October 26, and the top male and female finishers for students and staff will have their names added to a plaque to be displayed on the Sony Snack Shack. Next Friday is packed with activities. The pep rally will be held at 1.15, followed by multiple sports games. The parade and finally the football game against West Bridgewater. Yesterday, guest speaker Kevin Rosario came in to talk about his experience with drugs and addiction. We had a chance to sit down with Kevin and ask him some questions. You know, we, well, whatever it is, like, y'all are at that point, but that's about to happen. It might be funny right now, it might be a big joke, and all of you think you'll never become drug addicts, and you'll never do that. And I can tell you in sixth grade, I never thought I'd do that either. But when presented with the opportunity, I kind of just tried it. Next thing you know, it didn't end well for me. You know, from 13 years old... Yesterday, I Kevin Rosario came to speak to Holbrook Middle High School students on behalf of Gosnold, an organization dedicated to help men, women, and families battling addiction. He gave a presentation to both middle school and high school students in which he discussed the dangers of addiction and teen substance use. Yeah, I've been with Gosnell Treatment Center uh, since May of 2014. So one of my primary roles is to really get out into the world and let people know what addiction is and what resources are available. Um, so I do prevention work. This is like the prevention side of things. I go to schools and I talk to students about the developing brain and risk factors and things like that. I do community engagement where I'm out there and I'm talking to families and professionals so they can understand like what addiction is and what resources are available. And then I do business development and marketing and let the getting out in the world and letting people know what Gosnell does as a whole. I work with like unions and therapists and hospitals and just help people navigate treatment when they need it. The biggest thing I hope they take away is just understanding like the basic idea of brain development. Um, I don't intend to scare anyone. I don't think that's a, a, you know, an effective practice, but genetic predisposition, knowing your family history, the developing brain and how dopamine plays a part, and just really understanding that the uh, vaping and any other drug that you try before the age of 21 is, is really dangerous. Rosario made a definite connection with Holbrook's student body. My biggest takeaway is that vaping is like way more addictive than the regular things that you do. We're still developing, our brains are still developing, and we shouldn't be doing drugs and alcohol and all like that, and smoking, vaping, and all of that. We should just like be ourselves and not do anything else. My biggest takeaway was probably like the genetic factor to like, if your parents were addicted to a drug or an alcohol, you have like a bigger risk than regular people. This has been Dominic Costa with Code Blue News. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Dominic. A heads up to all HMHS students. Code Blue now has an Instagram. Go follow us at Code Blue HMHS. Earlier in the week, almost 40 students went to go see a production of the Broadway musical, The Lion King. The tickets were donated to Mrs. McDonough by the Maryland Rodman Theater for Kids program. On behalf of all the students who attended, we would like to thank both Mrs. McDonough and all the teachers who were chaperoned. This week, the Student Choice Tasting came to Holbrook and gave out samples to students. I talked to food director Jacob Martin and some students to find out more about the food and what they think of it. On Wednesday, Student Choice came to our school during lunch. Student Choice is a platform for students to taste and decide on new potential menu options. In introducing this program, administration here at Holbrook Middle High School hopes to give students a voice and have food their way. So Student Choice Tasting is a program that Chartwell's K-12 put together. Um, they are the food service provider for Holbrook Public School District. So for this one today, we are, chose a butcher and baker concept, it's called, and that is focusing on more deli sandwiches. So the students get to vote, and whatever vote 
whatever concept wins will feature on November's menu. What do you think about the choice given today at lunch? It wasn't that bad. It was good. I, I, I liked it. It was the, the chicken one and the, yeah, it was good. Which was your favorite one? I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't like any of them. <laughs> um, I will see like the barbecue one. The butcher was disgusting. <laughs> so I like the big city barbecue better. Neither because I feel like they could probably improve with the seasoning and just overall improve with the quality of the food. This is probably my third little sample of the pulled pork. The sauce is uh, zesty, spicy, and juicy. You know what I'm saying? The meat is nice and succulent. So I'm gonna say this is my favorite. And which menu option did you vote for? Of course, you know, I had to vote for the pulled pork. And I think a lot of people would agree that this is bussin'. Are you happy with our current menu options? No, because I feel like the school doesn't put in as much effort as they should. I think right now the menu options, they're not the worst. We have our good days, but I feel like if we incorporate stuff like this, the menu will be popping and again, bussin'. Students express their feelings and opinions about student choice tasting and the current cafeteria menu. This has been Katori Nicholas. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Katori. This week we have two students once again in the running for top girls soccer players in Massachusetts. Riley Cochran and Lucy Ambrose are competing against four other students on the Patriot Ledger's website. We encourage all students to go vote for them as many chances as they get before voting closes on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Today at lunch, you can buy pink room to support breast cancer research. Every ribbon that gets sold will get a free pink lemonade with it. Attention seniors, stop by Miss Gallagher's room to sign out a box of Hilliard's candy bars to sell. Also, cookie dough forms will be distributed at lunch today. Seniors are also asked to send pictures for the homecoming banner and ideas for powder puff shirts to Miss Gallagher by the end of the week. Seniors are also reminded to read an important email they received Wednesday from Miss Gallagher. Now let's go to Brianna with the weekly sports update. Hello Bulldogs and welcome back to This Week in Sports. Boys Cross Country is 0-5 and, and Girls Cross Country is 1-2. Their next meet is at Bristol County on Monday. The football team is 1-4 with their next game at Atlantis Charter today. Now moving on to the Dig Pink games. The 2-8-1 boys soccer team starts off the games today at 3 against South Shore Votech. Next, the 14-1 girls team follows up at 5 with a game against West Bridgewater. Finally at 7, the 13-4 volleyball team takes on South Shore Votech to wrap up the night. That was sports. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Brianna. If you're excited for Halloween and all things spooky, make sure to stop by the Holbrook Patrolman's Association Halloween Haunted House next week. This will run from Tuesday to Saturday next week from 6 to 10 at the old GFK Elementary School. That's all for this week. I'm Nile Horgan. And I'm Katori Nicholas. See you next Friday.